In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear friends, we begin our celebration of this fourth Sunday of Lent here in the Sacred Heart Chapel in St Mary's. We've chosen to begin today's Mass here in this place because it is situated above the crypt of the founding fathers of the early church in Glasgow, bishops Murdoch and Bishop Scott, the bishops who built the cathedral, established the church here in Glasgow after the Reformation and are laid here to rest in St Mary's. The particular reason is that they are not alone in the crypt, they are buried with other priests, the founding fathers of the church in this area, Father Peter Forbes who began the early church at St Alphonsus' side of the parish. He died at 67 years of age. Canon Carmichael, 69. Bishop Scott, 74. And Bishop Murdoch, 69. But then, as you look at the list of priests who are in our crypt, there is Father Bremner, 49. Father Cody, 41. Father Noonan, 53. Father Welsh, 28. Father McCabe, 34. Father Kenny, 36. Father Patterson, 28. Father Lillis, 33. Father Black, 23. And Father Sinnott is 53. That is because these priests worked here during the time of typhus, or Irish fever, which plagued Glasgow in 1832, 37 and 47, and 51 to 52. It was also the cholera of 1832 and 1848 to 49, 53, 54. And so, as we are worried about disease and sickness, we are mindful that that is a sad history of our human condition. In the same way that these fathers who passed on the faith to us here in the Calton died in the hope of the resurrection, we too live in the hope of the resurrection. So to begin worthily our celebration of Holy Mass, let us remember our sins. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You give pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You give pardon and peace to all people. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us now go to the main altar for the celebration of these sacred mysteries. And I have to apologise, this is where my technical skills evade me. I don't have the capacity to cut and paste bits of footage and make this look sleek. reverence the Lord and the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle.
Let us pray. Father, help us to be like Christ, your Son, who loved the world and died for our salvation. Guide us by his example, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I'm going to open your graves. I mean to raise you from your graves, my people, and lead you back to the soil of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, my people. I shall put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I shall resettle you on your own soil, and you will know that I, the Lord, have done this. It is the Lord who speaks. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness, and for this we revere you. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count in his word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than watchmen for daybreak. Let the watchman count in daybreak, and Israel in the Lord, because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Israel, indeed, I will redeem from all its iniquities. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Romans People who are interested only in unspiritual things can never be pleasing to God. Your interests, however, are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, unless you possessed the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. Through your body, May he, they may, though your body may be dead, it is because of sin. But if Christ is in you, then your spirit is life itself, because you have been justified. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give you life too, and will give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit living in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The sister of Martha and Mary, the sisters Martha and Mary sent this message to Jesus. Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death, but in God's glory. And through it, the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, Yet, when he learned that Lazarus was ill, he stayed there. 
He was for two more days before saying to his disciples, let us go to Judea. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world. Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart, Where have you put him? They said, See how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, He opened the eyes of the blind. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, have I not told you that if some, if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone And Jesus lifted his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all these who stand round me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus here, come out. And the dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff, and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary had seen what he had did and believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, the readings of this fifth Sunday of Lent seem to be a gift from God for us, in that first reading we listened to, in Ezekiel, the voice of the Lord speaking to his people. I mean to open your graves and I shall put my spirit in you and you will live. The word of God is always something which challenges us and is out of sync with the world around. Where many of us will feel burdened with all the talk of sickness and death. Hear the voice of God this Sunday penetrates the darkness of the world. We hear God saying that he will give us his spirit. He will give us life. St. Paul coaxing us to be interested in spiritual things, to be different from the world, that when faced with the danger and illness, grasps primarily and firstly for material things. We thirst. We thirst for God. The psalm we gave 
Psalm 129, which in recent times more profoundly I've reflected as a priest. The beauty of Psalm 129 has been almost lost in us. There was a whole generation of Catholics as soon as the priest would evoke, out of the depths I cry to you, Lord, the faithful would have replied, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. In fact, it was in hearing Psalm 129 at the death of my grandmother when I was a child really solidified my desire to become a priest. Because we were gathered for the rosary, mourning her passing. And the community began in the house, with out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. And I witnessed my neighbours and family and friends reciting the Psalms together. And it enkindled me a profound sense of identity as a Catholic, a profound source of comfort as the people of Israel would recite the Psalms to find comfort. The church this week, today and in every day, finds comfort because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. The gospel was that beautiful story of Lazarus, the friend of Jesus, and his two loving sisters who believe that by now Lazarus will smell. Lord, don't open the grave. By now he'll smell. Jesus, our God, is always a God of surprises. Even to those who knew him and loved him, he was yet to reveal the fullness of his power. The fullness of Christ's power will be revealed in these hard times. The same Jesus who came amongst the apostles at Easter and said to them, do not be afraid, and breathed on them the Holy Spirit, will breathe life afresh into the church. While we are using social media to communicate I've been struck by the number of messages and humour which is being used at this time. It's a wonderful gift. In fact, I had a picture sent to me. It was two members of the royal family inquiring how their respective families are where one member says, how's your dad? And to which one says, he has been diagnosed with coronavirus. And the other says, mine's is fine. A perfectly normal exchange. But if the members in the royal family in the picture, one was third in line to the throne, and the other no longer lived in the United Kingdom. Humour enters in. Never equate seriousness with solemnity. And never think that humour represents flippancy. The Jesus who will guide us safely home will not do so with a face of agony such as displayed in Calvary. He will guide us home with a smile. He'll guide us home with a smile which evokes his love. I mentioned the messages we received. I received one from a friend in Italy and my Italian is not brilliant, and I was struggling through the translation. 
ho visto un uomo vestito in bianco. And I started to read it and it was a reflection of the Pope's holy hour last night. I saw a man dressed in white. And it was a very ponderous reflection describing the scenes. If any of you have seen it, or if not, I encourage you to go online and look at the holy hour. And it talked about the Pope, a man who looked as if he had the weight of the world on his shoulders, contemplating before the Blessed Sacrament. A man who was clearly himself ill with old age, walking feebly. And he brought our blessed sacrament, the Lord, to the doors of the basilica. And the bells rang out. And as the bells rang out, the sirens of all the police cars began to wail in respect. That all too familiar Italian police siren. But it changed in character. The sirens were not wailing for people to get out the road of these cars. But to me, the police sirens sounded as if they were wailing to heaven, asking the Lord to help us. If you, O Lord, should mark a guilt, who would survive? But with you is found the fullness, forgiveness, and for this we revere you. God's love always has the last word. When we get through this, we need to look beyond the borders of Europe. We need to look to the refugees and make sure that there is a true end to sickness and disease. The sickness and disease of selfishness, of division, of disinterest, of poverty, of oppression. That is a true sickness that threatens the world because it can claim your soul. But with the Lord, there is mercy, forgiveness, fullness of redemption, and for this we revere him. Let Jesus Christ be praised now and forever. Dear brothers and sisters, let us recite together the Apostles' Creed, professing our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to death. On the third day rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church throughout the world, asking God to give us the gift of his Spirit. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for all those who are suffering disease and sickness, that we, humanity, may use the gifts God has given us to help them at this time. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for those who will be baptised 
this Easter, that they will receive new life from God who is love. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for those who have died. We remember those whose anniversaries are at this time and whose months mind will be celebrated. We pray for the families of Daniel Barrett and Helen Anderson from this parish of St Mary's and the parish of St Alphonsus whose funerals will be celebrated privately. The burden of family being unable to say goodbye to their loved ones through the sharing of Holy Mass, which brings so many of us comfort. But the Lord gives a special blessing to them at this time. Lord, hear us. Let us now offer our own prayers, asking God to help us. God, our Heavenly Father, receive these prayers and exchange them with the gift of your grace. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of life. Blessed be God forever. Lord, God, receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you, the humble and contrite heart. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Almighty God, may this sacrifice that we offer take away the sins of those whom you enlighten with the Christian faith. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, it is truly right and just that we always give you praise. As the man, like us, Jesus wept for his friend Lazarus, who had died. As eternal God, he raised Lazarus from the dead. In his love for us all, Christ 
gives us this sacrament to lift us to everlasting life. Through him, the angels of heaven offer the prayers of adoration. May our voices be one with theirs in the triumphant hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are truly holy, the fount of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the chalice to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for many so that sins might be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity through the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory.
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, as Jesus taught, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all distress as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I give you, my peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Lord, through the spiritual communion of our families of St. Alphonsus Parish, St. Mary's Parish, and St. Vincent's Deaf Community. Help us with the grace and gifts of your Holy Spirit. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty Father, through this sacrifice, may we always remain with one with your Son, Jesus Christ, whose body and blood we share, for he is Lord for ever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, I hope this is of a help to you. I'm not enjoying the isolation, and I suspect you aren't either. You learn how, as a priest, the presence of the people around you and their prayers help you to celebrate and commune with God and each other. Let's continue to pray for each other and to look out for each other. For those who would wish to receive Holy Communion, St Mary's will be open between midday and one o'clock this Sunday. We are not allowed to congregate, but with supervision and help, you will be able to come in, receive Holy Communion and leave, entering one door and leaving another. You can make your exercise tomorrow a spiritual exercise. Walk to the church saying your prayers and spiritual preparation. Receive the blessed sacrament and leave, offering your prayer of thanksgiving, offering your prayers to God for each other as you leave. Until we meet again, let us pray for God's blessing. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you and those dear to you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace, giving glory to God with your lives. Amen. And thanks be to God.